And welcome everybody to the huddle. New graphics, same show. I'm KGO9 Sports Director Jason Barr, joined by our main anchor, Pat Paris. It's game week. Pat, good afternoon to you on this Tuesday, August 30th. He's got the Pat loves his game notes, everybody. Gotta have your game notes. Available. He prints those game notes out. We tried to beat him to it this week and bring it back to him. You, did, you actually did beat me. That's yeah, right. you did beat me. You and Briano did beat me to it today or yesterday. Pat, you feeling pretty good? Year two of the Jed Fish era, except He's kind of saying this is year one. He's not counting last year. He says those weren't his players. Uh, Pat, let's play a sound bite. Start off with Jed Fish talking okay. about uh, talking about going into the season. I want to hear Fish, uh, Jed Fish's sound bite, and then I want to get your reaction to it as Arizona football gets set to open its season this Saturday, national TV against San Diego State. Let's hear from Jed Fish uh, about thirty seconds worth. I'm cautiously optimistic um, with our with our team going into. Uh, week one and uh i know that while we've never played together as a football team yet we've got 70 players that have never played um together we have 53 players that weren't even on our team uh we have to see what it's all going to look like but i i do believe that if we um uh, do what i think we can do we'll be able to you know start this build the way we want it to be pat how optimistic can you be coming off a one in 11 season with the type of schedule they have which is cautious, tough. cautiously optimistic <laughs> is what you have to be because you just don't know. You're you you and I both know the eye test shows that this team is better than they were last year, and in some cases, you Roth know, you're talking about better. Roth yeah, you're talking better. about big upgrades in certain position players. So you you would expect it, it to be better. I, you you mentioned right at the start that Jed Fish says, "Well, it's year two, but it's really year one." As we were just making our way. I asked that, you know, in, in kind of that way, I asked to, take, to Dave Hickey when I did that sit-down interview for a football special, and, and he said, well, uh, you know, you could look at it that way, but it's year two. And also, I, I said, so how do you how do you gauge it? Is it just about the, you know, just about the wins and losses? And he said, he pointed to the scoreboard behind me. He said, you know, we keep scoring this game. So Dave Hickey, I don't know that he's buying his year two, uh, or or uh, he he says it's year two. I don't know if he's buying that it's only year one uh, for a full season, you know, under Jed Fish. And he wants results. That was that was what I got out of that. And I think as a fan, I want to see results. As a as a sports journalist, I look at it and say, this team should be better. Let's see how it plays out. Yeah, certainly it starts with a quarterback, Jaden Delora. Now they play San Diego State. This is a team they played last year. Last year, U of A football had some good competitive games that they lost, but they also had some stinkers. This was a stinker, Pat. Uh, they had nine first downs the whole game. It was 21 nothing before you sat down in the stands with your with your adult yeah, exactly, beverage or your Coca Cola. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But how much can you take away? Uh, they've got different players. Arizona's got 50 new players. Uh, certainly uh, San Diego State doesn't have its starting quarterback or, or running back. Actually, they've got a pretty good quarterback this year uh, with Braxton Burmeister, a guy who's uh, who's competed, uh, uh, I should say, committed to Arizona twice and and backed off and ended up in Oregon, Virginia Tech, and has had a journey of his own. So, you know, it is a very much different roster uh, than the last couple of years. Uh, I think that could, could certainly go into Arizona's benefit. But, Pat, got to be very careful going into this game because they're starting a, a new season with a new stadium for San Diego State. It's Snapdragon Stadium. Anytime that happens, it adds extra emotion to a season opener. I think Arizona, the takeaway from last year's game is maybe not the players or the score, but you can't get punched in the mouth right away. Yeah, that's a great point. If you remember how last season played out, they started out at BYU, remember? And they actually played fairly competitive against BYU and lost. They won that third was, quarter. They won yeah, they won the third quarter. quarter. You're right. They won the third quarter. They lost the game, and they won the third quarter. So they came back home last year for their, their home opener. With some a lot optimism. Of it, with some optimism because excitement that, hey, it's not the old regime. It's Jed Fish. He has us believing. He has the players believing. And they got knocked in the mouth once, then twice, then three times. And they, they were down, Jason, it was eight minutes and 53 seconds into the game. They were down 21 nothing. Can't have that happen ever again if you're Arizona football. But and what you, I'm you, saying is there's the potential of that with the excitement in a new stadium. That, yes. And 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 there's that excitement. There's the, there's the whole overarching uh, you know, idea that this San Diego State team is almost in a way continuing its audition to be moved up 
to the Pac-12, right? In the uh, in the since 2016, Jason, since 2016, San Diego State is seven and two against the Pac-12. So it's not just Arizona they, that they beat. They're seven and two against the Pac-12. They're trying to prove to everybody that they are a power five quality team. Now you and I can say, look, there's only three returners on offense seven returners on defense. This is not the team that beat Arizona last year. This is not the team that was a top 25 team all season long at San Diego State. But they want to prove that they belong in the Pac-12. Um, they want to become one of those next couple of teams that gets added if the Pac-12 continues to hang around. So I, I think that you're right. There's there's a little bit of a, a concern that San Diego State might have a lot of confidence rolling out of the tunnel at Snapdragon Stadium on Saturday. All right, let's touch on the quarterback position. This I just mentioned a little bit earlier, but uh, you know, obviously we know Arizona led by Jaden Delora, the Pac-12 offensive. Uh, he was the Pac-12 freshman of the year last season for uh, Washington State before he transferred. But also an interesting situation with Braxton Burmeister. He's the San Diego State quarterback. Here's a guy in Burmeister who committed to Arizona decommitted, committed again to Arizona, decommitted. By the way, this was six years ago. Ends up in Oregon, plays two seasons, transfers to Virginia Tech, plays two seasons, comes back for his final year of eligibility. He's a San Diego guy, um, uh, uh, went to high school in La Jolla, set every record you can imagine. Right. And you can see here, even in the video, he's got a pretty good arm. And, and uh, uh, he's going to be a challenge for Arizona uh, on on and its defense on Saturday when they head to San Diego State. And I, I don't know a lot about, uh, you know, I, I haven't watched either of these quarterbacks play a lot, uh, Delora or Burmeister, but they well, seem to be Delora good. In the, in the game, it was a bad weather game. Watching yes, the yes. Year, yeah. But you know what I'm saying? We haven't seen a, a, their whole body of work. We've right. seen highlights. We've seen a, a game or two. I think they're very similar quarterbacks. I think they do have strong arms. I think they can run the ball a little Burmeister bit as well. Can run. Yep. Yeah. And I, and I think that um, that's going to be a challenge for the Arizona defense. Uh, for Burmeister, I mean, what a great opportunity for this young man to go back home. Uh, he's got a lot of experience playing in college football. Now he gets a fifth year and he's going to be back home, um, you know, and open a new stadium. I mean, there's a lot of great things uh, going for him. You know, for Arizona's defense, it was the question mark last year. It'll be the question mark this year. We again see a lot of improvement uh, with the roster. We see some of the guys that have been here a few, a few years get another uh, season under the belt. Um, 11 transfers uh, coming into this Arizona squad, uh, 39 the high school uh, players coming in uh, to play their first games. It, there's a lot of question marks, Jason. I guess we'll have it a lot answered by uh, late afternoon on Saturday. Jason Barr, Pat Paris, we're doing the huddle here on KGUN 9's uh, streaming sports platforms. By the way, you can uh, chime in here with a, with a, with a comment and their question. We'll be happy to read it. All right, so let's talk about a few of those players. Certainly a lot of offensive weapons for Arizona they didn't have last year. Pat, I don't want to see a situation where we're in the middle of the second quarter, they're down 10-3, to 3, and we're texting each other, why has Tedaroa McMillan not have a reception yet? Why are they not throwing the ball to Keon Burnett? I think Fish needs to make a statement early and get those guys the ball, almost the way he did in the ASU game, the last game last year, the Territorial Tough game. I forget whether he did a flea flicker or he did some type of play. And, and, he, and, and you know, early in the game, the first play, just to kind of make a statement, hey, we're here, we're here. I want to see McMillan and Burnett and, and Jacob Cowing, uh, the other wide receiver, who's uh, who's going to be the, the slot receiver, uh, Ted Aroa McMillan, the outside guy, I want those guys involved in the offense early. What do you think about that? Yeah, and I think I think you know that's what we were screaming for all of last season was to get some of the the guys, the playmakers involved very early and get them involved early and often. Uh, you're going to have a st really strong. I mean. The running back depth on this team, Jason, is unbelievable. So you're going to be able to establish the run, we hope, as long as the offensive line can can get any kind of push whatsoever. But I'm like you. I, I think you've got to get this offense into a rhythm that we never saw happen for very long uh, last year. We never saw long stretches where this offense was just – was just clicking and they were just piling up the points. It never happened. And and that that's one area that you've got to see is this offense with Jaden Delora you know, one of the things I did, I did agree with with Jed Fish yesterday, and and, and we we uh, we played a soundbite with him last night at six and ten, and that was he was talking about the Jaden Delora effect. Is there's a confidence level that you really didn't have last year um, with the quarterback. There's a there's a an expectation level 
with this quarterback. And there's a, there's a, you know, you take that expectation level and you just, you expect to see him succeed because he's done it already in the Pac-12. Uh, and that, that alone is worth a lot. I think Jason, to have the players run out of the tunnel, even if it's in San Diego, they, they expect to move the ball. They expect to score points with Jaden Delord at quarterback now this season. Yeah, he actually led the Pac-12, and I believe it was yards and touchdowns in Pac-12 games. So why is that important? Well, he didn't just, you know, uh, accumulate a whole bunch of stats in, in a couple of non-conference games. He did it during conference games, and he's done it before. It's not like a situation where you don't know if, if this guy can, can get it done uh, in the conference, as you said. And then you look at the other side of the ball. Uh, they were, I believe, last in the NFL in red zone defense. Uh, last year, both red zones were terrible. They couldn't get any turnovers. The defense has got to come away with a couple of turnovers, and they got to be aggressive to do that th this year. I thought Don Brown, in the totality and the whole scheme of work, I thought he did a really good job last year as defensive coordinator. But the one thing that you could really pick on besides the red zone defense is I believe they only had um, – I forget the number now, but but they did not have enough takeaways. This yeah. is a defense that has got to get the ball uh, back to its offense, and 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 not only is it a field position thing, it's a momentum thing as well. You could, I think, it was you could count it on one hand, or maybe maybe you know, definitely you could, not more than two hands to count the number of takeaways. It was it was a small amount. They they released a depth chart, Jason, and even the depth charts we talked about. When you look at this roster, you just see upgrades all across the board. And and uh, on the defensive side, you know, one of the, you know, clearly one of the strongest areas they have is defensive end. You've got to like the, the fact that they're going to be able to put a lot of pressure on opposing quarterbacks, uh, certainly. And then I mentioned running back. And Jason, you know, you could you could make an argument that guys that are sitting down, you know, uh, Rayshon Luke and, and uh, Drake Anderson, guys that are third and fourth on this depth chart, they could get playing time, lots of playing time in a lot, a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, power five conference schools. But because you've got Michael Wiley and this this Jonah Coleman, who's a freshman, is number two on the Jeff chart. And we all know what Michael Wiley can do. And with another season, I, 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 I'm I just excited about them carrying the football. I know we talk a lot about Jaden DeLore and we, he's got some great uh, new receivers to throw to. But I, I'm looking forward to this running game as well. Yeah, and certainly takeaways was has been an emphasis uh, that they've been doing in 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 the spring as well. And the running game, you know, they need a good offensive line. Uh, they got Jordan Morgan here anchoring it from the left tackle. Yep. Uh, it, it should be a, it should be an improved offensive line. All right, um, there's another issue, Pat, that we should we should get on here and discuss, and that is as you know, San Diego State is opening up its new Snapdragon Stadium. By the way, for those who don't know, uh, Snapdragon is, I believe, Qualcomm's top chip or top product Qualcomm, you know, uh, certainly a, a big semiconductor a company located in San Diego. We looked it up, so you don't have to. So anyway, <laughs> uh, I, I thought it was a soup in a restaurant or something. It's not. Um, anyway, uh, Matt Ariza, it's been a big story here in the, in the world of sports, nationally in the NFL. He was a punter on the San Diego State team last year. Uh, Matt Ariza was a Bills rookie who just got cut. Uh, he's been accused of, of rape and in a possible, possible gang rape. Um, I'm not sure uh, how much uh, of a cloud this is over uh, Snapdragon Stadium, uh, but it's certainly not a good thing for, for San Diego State. And I think it was emphasized yesterday, Pat, what do you think in that news conference uh, yeah. that San Diego State had? Give me your thoughts on what happened and tell everybody what happened in that news conference it, it, at San Diego State yesterday. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read from the Associated Press article because obviously neither one of us was there. But in San Diego, uh, the San Diego State uh, football head coach Brady Hope he actually said Monday, he had said yesterday, Jason, in this press conference that he didn't know that star punter Matt Ariza had been accused of participating in the gang rape of a 17-year-old at an off-campus party back in October until a civil lawsuit was filed last week. Now, you might question whether or not a head coach would know that or not, but we found out later after both uh, the head coach and the athletic director left the news conference because they got tired of trying to uh, get through that news conference. They got tired of answer, uh, being uh, asked the same questions. They need to the hire some of U of A's people who will end the news conference. Right. <laughs> right. Away. Go ahead. I mean, so, right so ahead. the athletic director, D John David Wicker, did come back and defended the school. And he said, and this this is important as to why they feel like they were doing the right thing. He said that the school administration, San Diego State administration, 
decided to obey the San Diego Police Department's request to delay a campus-led inquiry into the alleged gang rape until authorities finished their criminal investigation. Uh, the uh, incident happened allegedly on October 17th. Uh, this lawsuit was just filed because apparently uh, the proceedings were going a little too slow with San Diego police. Uh, and so uh, that's that's where that all stands. So is this, uh, you know, for the current players, none of the current players uh, were involved in this. Apparently the uh, two other players besides Ariza are no longer with the team. That's right. Uh, so is it uh, something that could cause a, a problem? Well, you always talk about distractions and you don't want distractions and a head coach will tell you to uh, avoid and eliminate all distractions. It could be a distraction. Uh, the head coach, Hope, will we'll see if he uh, is able to make sure it doesn't become a distraction for his team on Saturday. I don't think it is unless there's somebody on that roster right now who was involved in that incident. That's like saying was was it a distraction. Was Book Richardson a distraction for U of A basketball last year? Nobody's thinking about that as they're going up for, for a jump shot. By the way, I know it's a little you know sensitive subject here. If Matt Arise is guilty of gang rape, yes, you can send him to prison, lock, lock, you know, throw away the key. But let's just make sure he is guilty. I feel like some of the things that I've seen recently, Pat, and heard from some national commentators, they're forgetting about the Duke lacrosse situation. Everybody wanted to throw the book at these Duke lacrosse players, and they didn't did it. Do it. Now, I'm not saying Matt Ariza didn't do it. We don't know. I'm just saying let's find out. It does look like he's guilty of statutory rape, if nothing else. But but, but, but I'd rather just see it play out than everybody just, you know, uh, vilify somebody when we don't know for sure yet. I'm not saying I don't believe the the defender. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying before we we send him to right. we send him away um, because uh, his life is altered already. Before we we make it a whole lot worse, let's just make sure he did it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and uh, in the meantime, we'll wait for a football game to be played and uh, that let it take its course uh, through the legal process, both uh, on the the uh, police side with the uh, potential charges, and then on the civil side with the, with the uh, allegations. All right, so we got a couple comments here. AJ Reynolds, AJ Reynolds apparently doesn't think it's going to be any different than last year. I mean, uh, AJ, if you're saying 37, 13, <laughs> uh, it was 38, 14 last yeah, year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know, yeah, that's the same score pretty much. And uh, J.R. Kern, you're not very optimistic either. Well, are you ready for another losing season? Hey, come on, you know. Uh, let's, he did say let's... LOL. He said laugh out loud. So, all right. You know, yeah, well, he, you know, may, maybe he's not, maybe it's not all his, doom and gloom. And maybe that's his dog talking. So anyway, yeah, may, hey, Pat, that's a tough schedule for Arizona. I mean, I mean, you look at the non-conference games. Normally, you got one game in there that's like a little right. bit of a safety net. Not right. so. We know how good San Diego State was against them last year. How good they were last year. Then you got the team winning. I don't know what North Dakota State was. What is it? Seven out of the last ten. FCS championships or something. They're like that. extremely good for their level of football, yeah. without a and, doubt. And then before that, you got an SEC team coming in here. So Mississippi that, State. That's yeah. three tough games, and then there's it, a real tough is. schedule in the middle. So this is a this is a tough schedule for this team this year. I, I'm I'm a little bit more optimistic. I'm not maybe as optimistic as you are at times with uh, Jed Fish and this team, but I I, I definitely think. Uh, we can't just look at last year and say, well, San Diego State's going to win that game. And because North Dakota State's North Dakota State and they're such a power and they knock off of uh, they, they knock off a power five team every once in a while, we're going to they're going to lose that. I, I actually think they can be two and one after this first three games, but I don't think they get more than a couple more wins after that. So uh, I actually think that uh, while it's a difficult uh, non-conference schedule, that they could actually have a winning record for a brief time this season and it'll be because of these first three games the over under is only two and a half if i'm not mistaken the i think the, you're right the odds if anybody wants to go uh to go to go bet on it i believe it's just two and a half they just got to squeeze three wins out of there somewhere i tell you what i would go the over if i if i have to place a bet on this arizona team i'm not saying that as a homer believe me i criticize uh and 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 say i don't think they're going to do well i don't think that's the case here i think they're going to win I think they're going to win three games. I actually think they're going to win a couple more than that. But but um, I can see how it would be tough to see it uh, based on their one in uh, one in twenty something in their last twenty second something games. Because what one in eleven had the five losses in twenty twenty. That's one in sixteen. And then I think they lost their last eight, last their last six, seven, or eight of, of twenty of twenty nineteen. So like one in twenty four or whatever is the last twenty. I think it's games. the well, it's the worst record in that two and a half season stretch because yeah. of the because of COVID in all of of all of Power Five. 
Uh, the stat I was looking for is the Arizona defense intercepted four passes last season. I mean, only six teams in FBS had fewer picks. That's the stat I was going for earlier. Can you imagine that? They intercepted four passes the whole season. Mm. You've got players who intercept four passes in uh uh, in a in season. A season, well, you've got yeah. teams that intercept four passes in one game. That's yeah. a bad game for a quarterback. Yeah. For, and it's not just that's not picking on the quarterbacks. That's a totality situation of the defensive line and the linebackers it's, not getting right. to the You're quarterback. You're not getting pressure. And right. that's and that's a defensive coordinator who was blitzing. And mm-hmm. they still only got they still only got four uh four interceptions. So they need Jalen Harris and the other, you know, Hunter Eckel, who's new this year from USC. Yep. These guys got to get good. to the quarterback. Yeah. Got to get to the quarterback. They, that's, I mean, that's guys from each side, Jason, coming at the quarterback. You, you got to think that they're if they don't get to the quarterback, they'll get a lot of pressure on the quarterback this year. Yeah. All right. So that's it's Arizona. Uh, it's a, by the way, national televised game for for CBS. I, yeah, I don't it know is. why they're downplaying that so much. Uh, really, um, Fish downplayed that yesterday. Uh, Johnny Nansen, I believe the defensive coordinator, downplayed that a little bit today. I wouldn't downplay that. No, you're on, you're on no. national TV. And you're not only that, that to, it's, and maybe, it's maybe mid-after. They're just doing it externally, maybe within themselves. Could be. Because you got to motivate. You know, uh, you, that's something you got to say at the, going out of the tunnel. Everybody's watching you. Well, and and uh, I hate to keep going back to the interview I had with Dave Heakey uh, no, a week no, and a half ago, but. But he said, you know, we want to get the A out there. And he pointed to the A lapel pin that he had. You got to get the A out there. And that's why they they need to get more exposure with the Pac-12, Pac-12 after dark. They need need a better TV contract. They're negotiating that right now. But to have your team playing at 3.30 in the afternoon, Jason, on a Saturday, it's going to go from 3.30 to 7 o'clock at night on the East Coast, right, on CBS. So, yeah, I would embrace that. I'd be saying this is our chance yeah. to get the A out there and and let everybody know that we've turned the corner already in year two, you know, that we're back and we're going to, you know, and unless they want to downplay it in case they don't win. I mean, I mean maybe that's the argument. Hey, by the way, we, uh, yeah, one, of, one of our favorite players from last year, you and I were just talking about Stanley Berryhill uh, yeah. released today. Uh, I hate to see that. Will um, Parks also with the Jets. It happens. But, uh, you know. You know, those of us who like to follow the Arizona Cardinals as well, you had to note today that Josh Rosen got let go by the Browns. I don't know if you saw that or not. I didn't. I didn't. See uh, our our uh, our assignment desk uh, guy, Phil Villarreal, and I always talk Arizona Cardinals football. And we can't help but, you know, follow Josh Rosen. You know, he's had what a, a crazy, not very good ride he's had in four seasons. But I looked it up. He's he's you know he's now been released by like his fifth team maybe it's a sixth team, uh, four seasons, eighteen point six six million dollars he has made, uh, ten point eight million of that was the signing bonus that he got as a rookie from the Arizona Cardinals. So you can make a lot of money, Jason, bouncing around from team to team and never even really seeing the light of day. You and I feel a little differently about him. I think Josh Rosen can play. I think you put Josh Rosen in a certain situation, he would do very, very well. I think he just got a tough spot. He was on a terrible Arizona Cardinals team that first year that went 1-15, in I believe, that he was on the 1-15 in team. And then, of course, they had the number one pick, so they got Kyler Murray, and his stock was damaged. I know he's been in, in Tampa. Uh, there's no real place to play there. Uh, I believe the 49ers signed them off to Tampa's practice they squad, did. if I'm not mistaken. They did. Yep. I didn't really even realize he was in Cleveland. He can play. I'm telling you, he's a fantastic athlete. I just hope he got See, it. I, we disagree. That's where we disagree. Yeah. I, I, I watched him play. I watched him play in college, and I was under. He was terrific. He was, he was, uh, was underwhelming his senior year. He was, uh, he was his, his, his final year, not his senior year. His his whatever it was was his junior year. His sophomore year was great. His junior year was not good. I, was I thought hurt. he was. He was. I, I thought. A bit I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was a real stretch for them. And then remember, he was mad at the ten teams that didn't take him. He was going to get back at him. Now he's played for like half of those ten teams. And ah, come on. And, he actually yeah. he interviewed very well for that draft back in uh, eighteen or whatever year it was. It actually well, moved them up, and the Cardinals traded up. When you get for when him. you get five opportunities and none of them work out, I, I well, don't know. it's not necessarily him. It's you, it's very difficult. Uh, you've got three quarterbacks on, only make a team. Two of them, you know who they're going to be already. But you in know, Cleveland, a, in Cleveland, you should well, be able to make out? the. You brought it up. Who who beat them out then? I'll have to look. We'll have to look at. Yeah, we'll have to look it up. We'll have to see who beat them out. You know that that's part of it. 
And uh, we'll see if he latches on somewhere else. I, I disagree. I think Josh Rosen. Well, play. Deshaun Watson, who's suspended, so you already you need an extra quarterback, right? Jacoby Brissett. Okay. Joshua Dobbs beat him out. I don't know who Joshua Dobbs is. Exactly. <laughs> Let's see if I can look him up. Tennessee quarterback. Tennessee quarterback. 27 years old, uh, four of five in, in 2020. He got he threw five passes. He completed. All right. Well, to your point, that's somebody who you really could have an opportunity to beat out. You know, he's yeah. 27. It's not yeah. like, uh, you know, he's got some untapped potential that that maybe that you don't see. So, uh, um, nah, it's yeah. too bad. And it's for, a, uh, you know what? And and I I do like Josh Rose. I really do. I I, I when he when they drafted him, hey, they drafted the Cardinals drafted him. We rooted for him. It just didn't it didn't work out. And. Yeah. And uh, I get my point was you can still make a lot of money, Jason, even if you don't really get on the field much. Oh, and, I think a backup and, quarterback's a great position in the NFL. I know, and he, he missed he a lot just, of money. You don't get your brains beat in, and you get the pension afterwards. Right, but remember, he almost got a ring with Tampa Bay, but they released him off the practice squad right before the end of the season. They didn't so release he, him. What happens is if another team can sign you yes, off, the you're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. happened. They didn't. They he didn't got take. Him. He got taken off. You're right. right. He got taken off it. So he was a, a whisker away. And eyelash away from from having a Super Bowl ring. Too. I would have stayed in Tampa if I. I, I was obviously got to go to a team and not be on somebody's practice squad. But but uh, you got to go for the opportunity. But I yeah. I thought that that practice squad was a decent spot for him. Anyway, that's enough on Josh Rosen. I, I it's nice when we agree. It's also good when we disagree too. So you get True. some so you True. get some different points of view. All right, so we're about to wrap up here. The last thing I just want to say is, hey, anybody uh, anybody watching the U.S. Open. Uh, Serena Williams, uh, she won last, this is her last tournament probably, um, you know, the way she's looked the last couple of weeks, I, I don't blame anybody for thinking she was going to lose her first round match. They gave her a very easy first round match. They had the ceremony afterwards because you're never sure, you know, if that's going to be her last one. She's got a much tougher opponent. She's got the number two seed in her second round. If she can get by that, she can get a little, you know, confidence going, the moment, not confidence, but momentum going and, and, and maybe make a run because the draw opens up, but I don't think she's moving great. And no, I think the play not. against, the play the against her night, yeah. is to drop shot. And as Chris Everett said in the commentary hit behind her. So yeah. I, I can't, I don't see her making a big run. A la McEnroe made his big run in 1990 at the end of his right. career. Jimmy Connors did it a year later. I don't see it here, but if she can get through this second round match, which is going to be tomorrow Wednesday uh, of this week as we as we tape this, uh, we could have a lot of fun following her. But but just as from a sporting event, watching the U.S. Open and the excitement and the electricity around it, it makes for great theater. Yeah. Oh, there, there's nothing better than a U.S. <laughs> Open, you know, nighttime match. It, That's right. It, it's it's phenomenal. Is she going to play with her sister in doubles too? I believe is, so. I don't know yeah. how she can do that. Uh, uh, I mean, that takes a lot out of you to play singles and doubles at, at age of 40. Um, yeah. But, but I believe we'll that's see. the plan. We'll so see. so yeah. uh, we'll see. All right. So we'll talk a little Cardinals next week. I wanted to I wanted to do much more U of A. Yeah, the Cardinals don't start. Oh, yeah, absolutely. After, so absolutely. I want to do much more U of A. All right. Well, so, a good chat, so I'm going to I'm going to say four. Preview. I'm going to say four wins. I'm going to say oh, four wins right. for Coming Arizona in. Wildcats. Yeah. I'm going to go four wins. I'm going five. Okay. Not to what? Not to one up you. That's what I would. No, no. Said you and I have talked, yeah. and that's what we've been yeah. saying for the last couple yeah. of weeks. So I, yeah. I think no, I'm, I'm confident in four. You're confident. I'm in five. not doing a Price is Right thing and going one up. That's, no, that's, no, what, no. I, that's what I would have said. That's what I would have said. All right. Thanks everybody for tuning in, both live and also we get a lot of uh, viewers, uh, listeners on on when it runs OTT. Anyway, for Pat Paris, I'm Jason Barr. Thanks everybody for watching the huddle here Tuesday and uh, three o'clock uh, Arizona time, and we'll be right back here next week. We'll talk about the game and how the Wildcats did. For Pat Paris, I'm Jason Barr. Have a great day, everybody.